Week 11, problem 12. A thief hides a precious jewel, a jewel thief, by placing it on the bottom of a public swimming pool. He places a circular raft on the surface of the water directly above and centered over the jewel as shown in the figure below. The surface of the water is calm. The raft of diameter 3 meters prevents the jewel from being seen by any observer above the water, either on the raft or on the side of the pool. What is the depth H of the pool for the jewel to remain unseen? Man. Oh, the physics professors that think this up. Like, if this wasn't problem wasn't so frustrating and causing you so much stress in life, you'd probably enjoy these type of questions. All right, so let's look at this conceptually, see what's going on here. So let's say we got your little guy right here, and he's looking down from this point here. So he looks down like this. Then we would have um, sine of theta, uh, Snell's law, so sine of theta 1 over velocity 1 over sine of theta 2. Velocity 2 means that if we come in here with a zero angle uh, with respect to the perpendicular, we're going to have a zero angle coming in this way too, so it's not going to help us out. All right? So if we do something more, look from over here, it's going to bend down. Look from over here, it's going to bend down. I think the maximum we're going to get is if we look straight, like straight on, top of the pool, hits, hits this point right here, and then come all the way down like that. I think that's the best we're going to get for trying to see this jewel. So we want to look at our best option to see this jewel and then ensure that it fails. So I'm going to say from here, we're going to look straight across and then right there. Perfect. And then I'm going to make this do another line like this but you are going to be the perpendicular. Ooh, I'm going to use black, because blacks make better perpendiculars. Like that. That seems reasonable. OK. So I think this is going to be our best chance here, looking and just barely look at the edge, and then it's going to bend down. Does that work? Yep, so it's not actually 90 degrees, but it's like slightly less than 90, which I'm just going to round off to 90. So this would be theta 1, this would be theta 2. Okay, um, well, let's start with some of the math. Throw out some Snell's law, sine of theta 1, velocity 1, sine of theta 2, velocity 2. Okay? So, theta 2, so we're going to say sine of theta 2 equals v2 over v1 times sine of theta 1. Now, they don't tell us the index for a fraction for water, do they? Okay, so I'm going to make some assumptions here in life. And by me, I mean Wikipedia. Index of refraction. And, oops, see, C over V was now, oh, wait a second, is that what we want? Water. For example, the refractive index of water is 1.33. I'm going to round that off to four thirds. So, N water equals four thirds, which implies the velocity of um, light. In water, I'm going to call this V2, is going to be 3 fourths uh, C. Perfect. And I'm going to assume that air, V1, is C, pretty much. You know, there's not a lot in air, you know, life giving oxygen and four times as much nitrogen, but you know, still pretty much nothing. And 1% argon. All right, so, hmm, hmm, let's find theta 2. We can find theta 2. So, simplify this guy a little bit. V2 is 3 fourths. C divided by C, which is just 3 fourths. Sine of 90. And we're going to assume we're going to look at the absolute shallowest angle possible. So this guy is going to be 1 equals, nope, I'm going to do arrow, so implies. 
So I'm saying it's connected, just no no uh, commitment. Three fourths. There we go. And let's see. This guy is supposed to equal. What do we have here? Theta two. Pretty sure it's theta two. Arc sine of. Yes. They did too. Success. All right. So now I should probably figure out what that is. Arc sine, arc sin of three divided by four. We want the one that's in degrees. Forty-eight point six. I gotta say forty-eight point six equals forty-eight point six degrees. Got it. Okay. So now we know the angle that we have going down. We need what the depth. Okay. Yes. What is the maximum depth for the? Pool? Okay. So now we have the. Um, hmm. Theta. We're gonna use tangent. So h over. So it's gonna be ah uh, down there. This would be d over 2. This would be h. So they have the diameter of the raft, which is what, 3 meters? 3 meters. That's a nice size raft. And then we have the depth over here, h. Hmm. So strangely enough, I'm going to be using the, the letter d for diameter and not um, depth. All right. So opposite over adjacent. The opposite will be diameter over 2. And adjacent will be h yes so therefore the depth is h equals 1.5 which is 3 divided by 2 or tangent of theta 2 which is like 1 so I'm gonna say 1.55 I gotta say 40 no I gotta say 1.6 meters One point five divided by tangent of this. One point three. Ah, eh, went the wrong direction. One point three two three. Which is reasonable depth. Yeah, it's like four feet. One point three two three meters. Is that right? Click. One point three two three. Yep. So one point three two three meters. That wasn't as hard as I thought it was going to be. For such a complicated question, it wasn't that hard to do. All right, so here we go. A little bit of backtracking. So draw a picture. Through trial and error, we kind of look at it and figure out which is going to be the best direction. The nice thing about this is if you do it wrong and you're not quite sure, you just do it again for another value you think might be better, and you just choose the best one. Because this is the um, minimum depth, maximum depth. Sorry, this is the maximum depth we can have and keep the jewel remain hidden. So started off with Snell's Law. So we came up with this idea that, all right, we're going to look at it as shallow an angle as possible. And shallow angle means um, maximum angle from the perpendicular, so 90. This thing going to refract into the pool, and we're going to try and see the jewel that way. So the idea is the light is going to hit just shy of the jewel. And so we do sine theta 1 over velocity 1, and that's going to create this little shadow area right here that we can't see. So sine of theta 1 uh, over velocity 1, sine of theta 2 over velocity 2, where theta 1 is the 90. We then find out what this angle theta 2 has to be. We then use trigonometry tangent to find opposite over adjacent, and adjacent is the answer that we want. All right, and that is how we're going to do this problem. All right, that's it for problem. 12, one more on to problem 13.